Hello and welcome to another video demonstration by BSA Electronics. Today we're going to take a look at one of my level 2 EVSCs. This one is the model K2550A, which means it is a 50 amp unit with a 25 foot cord. I rate my EVSCs to match their circuit breaker requirements. Their continuous output is always 80% of that, so in this case 40 amps. This unit is equipped with the very popular NEMA 1450 plug. 1450 outlet can be found behind your electric range or cooktop as some people call it as well as RV parks all over the nation. Let's fire this up and see what firmware we have. So this is running the firmware seen in the screen which goes by very quickly and this unit is equipped with the optional Wi-Fi module and reveals the firmware there. Now this one I have already set up on my network so it has grabbed an IP address and we'll just knock that out so we don't have to look at that. But what that allows you to do is once it uh, reconnects to your Wi-Fi through power outage you'll see that and you can simply use your phone call up that IP address to see the screen served up by the unit if you need it. There is a lot going in, on inside of this box. The firmware is very advanced over the years and offers a lot of different things. So right now we don't have this plugged into the car. It is uh, in ready mode. This one uh, particular model includes the ammeter, which is optional on some of my builds. I offer a huge variety of different units. This one's fully loaded, so to give you an idea of all the different possibilities. It has the RGB premium LCD, so it changes colors with different status, as well as has a real-time clock uh, built into that which means you can set the EVSC to start and stop at the times you would like uh, to match up with time of use rates if you qualify for those in your state. Now these counters down here show you the session watt hours and the total accumulated kilowatt hours for the lifetime. This is not resettable. This is like the odometer on your car. This will go up as the car is charging for a particular session and when you charge it char uh, start a new session, this uh, amount will move over here. It is auto detected level 2 and the pilot is set for 40 amps. So let's take a look at the menu and what this thing can do. So if we press and hold, get into that delay timer I already told you about, tap once, we get set up, restart, and then exit. It goes back around to the delay timer. So we'll press and hold that and I'll show you. Press and hold to acknowledge. It's just a matter of tapping and holding and you get accustomed to doing this um, after a while you learn how it responds to you. So like in this case this would start at 5 after midnight. I'm going to press and hold this to acknowledge. Exit, put it on the back screen. Um, I didn't go into the whole thing to show you all the start and stop but right now it's sleeping. You would put it into the sleeping mode and then it would uh, show you a symbol um, okay, so you can kind of catch the way I'm doing it. It's easier to demonstrate it than to actually explain it. Okay, so you see the clock symbol. That means you have your timer. It's been activated. Now, it is currently sleeping. Okay, it's going to start at 5 after midnight, and then it's going to stop charging 5 minutes before 7 in the morning. You can change this anytime you want. You can change it as many times as you want by just changing this uh, set times there. And we're going to go ahead and turn that off. And you get an idea. See, it goes into a loop. Okay. So I have already done the date and time. Well, that's pretty self explanatory when you go in there. Let's take a look at some other things. The backlight type, you will always leave fixed to how it comes. In this case it's RGB, you leave it on RGB. The service level, this is set for auto and it should be set for that. You can force it to level 1 or level 2 if you have the supporting hardware. This is a level 2 only unit. Uh, if you leave it on auto it will do a stuck relay check when it boots up. If you force it to level 2 it won't do that check. So I like to have it do that check. The maximum current, here's something you might actually play with. If you were to use this with adapters, many of which I offer, 
you could plug this into various size circuits, including ones that are much smaller than a 50 amp circuit. And you're going to want to dial your amperage down to match that. So if you use an adapter to go into a common 30 amp dryer outlet, you do the math, 24 amps would be 80%. And we've set that. Now, the diode check, the vent required check, the ground check, the stuck relay check, and the GFI self-test as well as the temperature check are all for uh, diagnostic purposes and should be left enabled the way they are uh, out of the box. But you can go into each of those and turn them on and off. Right now they're all on. So we're going to exit and you see it took the 24 amp setting that we programmed in there. Now we're going to go ahead and plug the car in. Uh, for this demonstration, I have one of my Icebreaker J1772 extensions plugged into my Nissan Leaf outside. And I'm just going to plug that in. And here the contactor engage and the screen changes. It's going in charging status. Car ramps up its draw rate. And you can see my leaf is pretty thirsty and drawing nearly the 24 amps that is offered to it. This will continue on this way and accumulate as the car fills. And eventually this number will lower as the battery is becoming fuller and the charge profile in the car tapers off the charge. And eventually it will uh, complete and this screen will go green and show it was completed. Now there are some other features you can get into. Time limit, that's how you get into it. So while it's charging, press and hold the button, you'll get into time limit. There's also charge limits. So what would you use these for even? A time limit will tell the unit that you only want to dump power into this for a certain amount of time. And you can see the symbol comes up. It's just a matter of tapping and you can roll through this menu. So if you're coming maybe up to the high tariff for your electric rate and you do not want to go over it and be penalized, you could simply set a time limit there. The time limit as well as the charge limit are only available in the menu after you've plugged the car in. Charge limit, you can decide, this is like prepaying for fuel. In this case it's energy and you can dump a certain amount of kilowatts into the vehicle. Now you get the lightning bolt symbol. Once you've accumulated the limit, in this case to kilowatt hours, make sure we use the right terminology there, then the unit will shut down. Um, you will find when you press the button uh, it will shut the charging off temporarily. You can hear that contactor click on and off. Because the J-plug was not removed from the car, power was simply coming on and off and the pilot was coming on and off, uh, some EVs are much slower than others to start picking up at the charging. In this case, the Nissan Leaf takes a good 30 to 60 seconds. If you play with this multiple times, you might find your car doesn't like you anymore and it just refuses to do anything. In that case, you're going to have to unplug and plug back in and then just do your time or charge limit setting just once. Okay, so I'm going to remove the charge limit so the car can charge up as much as it wants. Well, that should uh, pick up after several seconds. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Iman CMS power monitoring website, which shows the data that this unit uploads to the internet. So you can actually see temperature and current in real time. And there we go. 
See how it took a while for the leaf to pick up? And here we're taking a look at the Open Energy Monitor website. This is a third party website that the Open EVSC logs its data to using an optional Wi Fi module. In the case of the unit we're demonstrating today, that Wi Fi module is built in. Uh, this is the way the dashboard was set up by me for this particular unit. Actually, this customer has two units, so it's a dual setup. Uh, you will have a basic uh, setup to verify the Wi-Fi functionality. It won't have as many bells and whistles as you see on the screen here, but you can create your own dashboard and the Open Energy website sells additional sensors you can add to monitor uh, solar energy as well as utility energy and you can add uh, as many of these little widgets as you want to uh, monitor and create your dashboard. You can also create diff multiple dashboards all reading from the same uh, sensor feeds so you can have different looks. So for mine in particular I decided to go uh, with wattage on the left and a chart in the center and then amperage on the right and then below that we have temperature historic temperature and then um, the LED just lets us know red for stopped or black for charging and what the pilot is set for. So this is neat because this website can be pulled up from any uh, browser whether it be a smartphone or tablet or your uh, home PC which is uh, what I'm using right now and you can uh, see how the charging is going. That concludes my video demonstration of this level 2 BSA Electronics built EVSC based on the Open EVSC controller. Thanks for watching.